What's up, everyone? This is the Fraser LeVay podcast, and today was a especially funny episode, per usual, when we have comedian Jared Quay from Yahoo Sports, NBC Sports, and everywhere else. We talked, what would you do to make Eddie Murphy happy? Best comedians of all time. Is there a word on the street that maybe Tua messed around with that uh, cop in question's wife? And much more. Culture Corner with Jared Campbell, followed by week four NFL picks towards the last half of the podcast. Enjoy it, though. It's always a funny one. FanEverland.com for full picks and analysis. The Fraser LeVay podcast or the Fraser LeVay on YouTube. All of that. Subscribe. Enjoy. It's even better if it is forever And I don't know what I'm crying for You had those same looks in your eyes You think I can go on American Idol? Can I go Platinum? Yeah, at least American Idol. Platinum, I mean, it's tough, right? You know, you never know. There could be politics involved. Is there what's going on in society at the time? You gotta go to the dick party, man. Do what do what you gotta do, man. Sometimes you gotta get oiled up, baby. Sometimes you gotta get baby oiled up. <laughs> it's funny you bring that up because the diddy party thing we we're t- thinking about or talking about last week, I've thought about it more. And um, like I assume this happens in Hollywood a lot. Like let's take the diddy and the rape part out of it, but like just a Hollywood party, weird shit I assume happens, right? So like where is that line of like also imagine not, it's just me and I'm go to a party and Brad Pitt's there. And Brad Pitt mm-hmm. starts is like kissing dudes on the lips. It's like, oh, Fraser, you want to keep on hanging out? Like, kiss me on the lips. Like, it's cool. And you're like, I'm from Nebraska, let's say, and I just moved to LA. And I'm like, oh, maybe this is how things what, happen what, in Hollywood. What if, what if they put Molly into the punch? You got Molly in the punch, and now you're like, damn, I don't know why. I don't normally do this, but come here, Brad. Yeah. Give me the lips. <laughs> yeah, and like, would I want to be best friends with Brad Pitt for the next 20 years of my life, and all I have to do is kiss him, you know, and maybe, you know, yeah. massage him? E- EJ Johnson, I fucked the shit of me at a Hollywood party, bro. It was like, Ooh. I mean, yeah, it was the closest encounter I ever had to anything gay. It was just one time I was at a Hollywood party, right? You know, this back in the day, it's like 5 a.m. And you know, EJ, yeah. I had seen Matt Johnson's son was always this big, like, big, big fat dude, right? Mm-hmm. But I yeah. saw him at the party. I was like, that was like Matt Johnson's son, but he's skinny. So I started looking and I'm a little high and I just kept looking, trying to see if it was him. And then finally he knew that I was looking. So he was like, Oh, and it was a solid like it might only be like <laughs> half a second, but it felt like five minutes of just. And I was like, "Damn, did me and EJ Johnson just make love with eyes?" It's what it felt like. Wow. And so you guys do anything? Party. I don't did want you to do party. anything or no. You're gonna tag me on Facebook, and then people are gonna be like, <laughs> "Yo, this nigga Jared, you know, you're trying to smash EJ." Hundred <laughs> percent. Yes, I understand. This is great content. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, uh, but uh, but you ever I, know, you think about you think about EJ, all right? You ever like you ever encounter someone like several times, like you ever just bump into somebody and keep bumping into them, and you wonder like, is the hmm. universe trying to tell me like I need to have some kind of transaction with this person, like not like financial Ooh. or anything sexual, but just or, maybe oral. like share knowledge, right? And I I bumped into EJ Johnson more than any celebrity in LA in the course of my time out here. Probably like mm-hmm. six times. Six times me and EJ. Maybe like that's where our level of fame is at. I'm like, I'm EJ famous. Like me and him are not necessarily mm. Oscars after party at CAA, but we're both like, you know, special event attendants of the trees. That's, that's what me and EJ are. So EJ, if you're sense. watching this, which you're not, holla at me, bro. Yeah, we can get him on the podcast. This is where we live in these kind of realms. Yeah. As included myself with you and EJ. Um I figure we're going to have like a culture corner to start off our podcast because you're just our plethora of knowledge for just pop, uh, pop culture, culture Am in I general. Am I representing black people or culture? Is this like a- no, pop culture, pop culture okay. corner. Yeah, and, but also culture. So, yeah, I, I couldn't sleep last night because I was thinking about you and this topic. Let me finish. And this topic, you're going to love it, actually. <laughs> I was thinking about who are the best comedians of all time, top three, top four, and then... I'm going to I have something that I thought of last night for like three hours. I couldn't sleep because I was running through it because it's a pretty good idea. Would you say or who, if you just listed off the top three or four comp comedians of all time, who are they like Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, and then now Kevin Hart, Chris Rock? That's way more than three. 
<laughs> yeah, so three to five. Are they all in the kind of category of the the leaders? Yeah, I mean, so this is my thought process. Same where people are like Will Chambers, the goat, and like if I wasn't really around to appreciate the older comics, like Richard Pryor is a G. Like I can watch the stuff now and it still holds up funny. Mm. But like obviously he the revolution that like, what he did for comedy, I have to respect. But like, if I said Richard Pryor is in my top five. And it doesn't hold genuine because I never grew up and related to Richard Pryor's shit. Like, I can mm. watch it now. Like, that is pretty good. Chris Rock was one of my favorite first comedians. Bigger and Blacker was one of the first specials. I was like, yo, this shit is hilarious. Mm. Uh, Dave Chappelle is the GOAT. That's the best comedian of all time. Uh, and then Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac and uh, obviously just his Def Jam set, but even the Kings of Comedy, I was like, this guy is hilarious. And I felt like he... He was one of the people that died so young that you really didn't get to see the potential. Like that, I think you know. Sometimes when people die, they, that the the mystery of them holds well. Like you know, like XX Tennessee right? Don't get me wrong; he's probably a great mm. rapper. The fact that he died made him much more famous. Like if he was still around, he would have fell off like a little pump or somebody. And so, yeah, the fact that Bernie Mac died, that's me always wonder. Like he never fully gave us a special, special. Like he never mm-hmm. gave us the for what it's worth and that's what makes it but yeah those three and i gotta throw a white person on it if we're just to make it not seem racist i like daniel top yeah there's amount of humor and slight yeah. offensiveness to everybody is really good yeah uh I'm, so i'm glad you brought the wilt chamberlain thing because this is the epiphany i had when i couldn't sleep it boils down perfectly and you got to choose one jared compare comedians to the nfl or the nba so let's give me an example um dave chappelle Michael Jordan. Okay. LeBron is uh oh, sorry, I'm going David. Sorry, Dave Chappelle, I'm going Dave LeBron. Dave LeBron. Yeah, he's LeBron. I'm going Dave Chappelle LeBron. And then I'm going Eddie Murphy, Michael Jordan, because he just came out on fire, kind of changed a bit of the world that we did. He, you know, one of the mm-hmm. he could be the GOAT, he's an arguable GOAT. Then you he said Will Chamberlain. He stopped I can't believe he said, at 28. Right? I can't believe, and you know, Jordan retired, so he could have he had more meat left on the bone. And then Richard Pryor, you said Wilt. I had him down as Wilt. Or you could even say like Magic Johnson, but like someone before our time, but you still appreciate. Or Bill Russell, I had him. And then okay. you have Kevin Hart. Um, you can go plenty of different ways with that. Where Andy I think Edwards. now you go to the NFL. Boom, Kevin Hart, Mahomes, Tom Brady, Dave Chappelle, Joe Montana, Eddie Murphy, whoever you want to put Richard Pryor. And then it gets fun. Like even in the NBA, I was thinking people like. Jerry Seinfeld just kind of really like boring humor. Like you get it. It was it had its place. Still crushed it, right? Still a legend. Mm-hmm. Is that Tim he's Duncan? Like Eli. He's like Eli Manning. Yeah, or Tim Duncan. Like he's just kind of Yeah. I think not, you no can one uh, loves him. Nobody's favorite player is Tim Duncan. Nobody's favorite comedian is Jerry Seinfeld. Exactly. <laughs> but you still put up numbers. It's still widely respected as one of the best. All right. This is my comedian rank. This is how it goes. All right. Yeah. Um Cat Williams is Jimmy Butler. Because they're great, but at the same time, mm. they're like, ah, uh, not always, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and they both smashed Taylor Rooks. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I would go someone who's more er- erratic. I feel like Jimmy Butler is like mentally Jimmy Butler's there. erratic. No, he's erratic. I guess he's a wise. weird guy. Yeah, he yeah, just goes right. and he's just like, hey, I want to run with the twos and take on all the fucking starters, get on the fucking court, and he beats them. Like, that's a Cat yeah. Williams move. That's Cat Williams. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I feel like uh, Kevin Hart is Steph Curry. Yeah. Like, he's up there. You got to respect him. He's done a lot, but, like, no one's, like, Steph Curry's the GOAT. Mm. And I don't think, no one thinks Kevin Hart's the GOAT, but he's, like, a legend. Like, there, you can't deny what Kevin Hart has done to the game. He's You can't take his history away, mm-hmm. which I feel like is Steph Curry. Oh, and I, uh, I had Chris Rock as Kobe. Yeah. I would Doesn't that fit perfectly? Think, yeah, that is, because he's, like, the Eddie Murphy, Jordan, Kobe. Yeah. They try to be similar. Yeah, they put him on. And LeBron is Dave Chappelle. And yeah. uh, let's see. Gary Owens is uh, is Zubak. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that. Now there's no uh, smaller comedians. Like, let's go with the wing. <laughs> that's Darius, what I'm saying. Right? You can yeah. have fun and get real. Like, who's, who's Daniel Tosh? Daniel Tosh is like Steve Nash? No. Daniel Tosh is. Ooh, because he had yeah, a, uh, yeah. what's his name? The yeah. uh, coach of the Mavericks. Player. Steve Kerr. No, the Mavericks is uh, Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd, because didn't Jason Kidd get in a bunch of trouble and shit? He was a little bit off his rocker. I don't know. Yeah, no. I, I feel like just because of race, I want to make it a white player, but he's probably yeah. not a white player. You know, he's probably That's like fair. Rondo. 
Dan Natasha's Rondo. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> that one works. That one works. But we have to make them white just because, you know, colors. <laughs> yeah. Can you see why I didn't sleep last night for like three hours? Because I started naming comedians of who they are as athletes. It's a fun game. Think, well, you want to know what's even worse than athletes? You know, take your girlfriend, right? And then hmm. find five athletes that are her age. And you'll be like, this girl is old. And that just applies to anybody unless you're talking to like a 22-year-old girl, which you're not. But you're like, yeah. damn, my girl is Larry Fitzgerald. Oh, like she's Hall of Fame. Oh. Jack, yeah. <laughs> I think my girlfriend's Joe Burrow. No, your girlfriend's young? Yeah. Oh, my God. You're going to get canceled, bro. You can't do that. <laughs> groomer. You got damn Joe groomer. Burrow's like 27, 28. He's like 25. No, he's not. He's 28. I think he might be hey, 27, Google, actually. <laughs> how old is Joe Burrow? He's 27 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I only know that like, off the top of my head because uh, someone they said uh, someone else is 27 years old. That Oh, Sam Darnold is 27. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guy's young. But yeah, most people aren't that. Most viewers are like, yeah, my girl is Calais Campbell's age. <laughs> that, that's what always fucked me up with Frank Gore is every time fantasy season would come around, I'm like, I'm not picking up that motherfucker. He's old as fuck. He's and then good. I was like. Oh, I'm, and also I'm like five years older than him when he looks like 50. <laughs> <laughs> I was really I'm like, LeBron, obviously the, LeBron is going to play with Bronny Jr., which is amazing. But to me, I always felt hmm. like Frank Gore playing in the same backfield as his son would have been the most amazing thing of all time, oh, yeah. bro. That would have been impossible. On the, field, on the field at the same time in a wishbone. It could have happened. He just needed like four years. He needed like teams to just let him. He couldn't sit still. You know, he wanted to get, you know, 200 carries every season he played. He should have been a guy that comes in for like three downs. He could have got Donis Haslam his way into playing with his son. Ooh, and it would help right. his son get drafted. Because I think his son is like, he's not even playing anymore. He was like in the draft. He didn't get drafted. Oh, he didn't? Hey, Google. Huh. <laughs> Who does Frank Gore Jr. play for? Oh, he's on the Bills. Oh. There's no way. I guess Back he check is. Check that for me, Frazier. I will. Um, you don't Frank want to talk Gore, about this. No, did you have any? No, I was thinking I want to find it out. Like, you have any insight about Frank Gore? Like, how, his longevity? Was he a, a super freak in the gym? Did get good genes? Did he eat well? All right. I hope Frank doesn't watch this because it's, it's going to be kind of funny. Um, if you ever bump into Frank Gore, you'd be like, you're not an NFL player. He <laughs> doesn't look like it. He's not necessarily ripped. He's not the tallest. He just kind of looks like a regular guy. And I remember at Miami, everybody was like, yo, all the stars in there. I was like, who's Buddy right there? And he's like, that's Frank Gore. I'm like, oh, shit. And so, like, Frank was like... He's just a guy. He looks like a guy, but he's a dog. And like the rumors is, I don't know how true this is. They say he started as a freshman before Clinton Portis and Willis McGahee. But then Ooh. they both, he got hurt. And so they both jumped him. And then he ended up like Fred Sheridan getting to like four or five years. And then he came to the NFL. But like technically, that's how long his reign was from like Clinton Portis to like Jonathan Taylor. Like that's how long he was yeah. around and relevant. He doesn't like doing interviews. He doesn't like doing interviews. And the reason why is interviews sometimes can be confusing. People ask very difficult questions. That's why I don't like doing improv. People are like, yeah, talk about cervicals. And you're like, what? I don't know what the (laughs) fuck that means. And so, like, yeah, he doesn't like doing interviews. But one time when I was at Yahoo, he sat down there. I was like, yo, here's a question for him. Let me ask you. He came with questions, and he did a great interview with me. And everybody was like, that's surprising. Frank did do an interview with nobody else this whole week. I was like, well, it's you. Yeah, oh, fucking you. It's all about it. And so, yeah. yeah, I think the real problem is that Frank is uh, insecure with his ability to fully comprehend what these difficult questions interviews be saying because they be asking some wild shit in these interviews. And so, yeah, yeah. But other than that, he's he's one of the best running backs of all time, and that's because he's low to the ground and people don't. And you know, backs. I think that this is another thing. He doesn't have that many people trying to take pictures with him, bro. That takes it out of you. That's what makes people want to retire, bro. They get tired of being treated like an animal. They go on the streets and people are signing. Hey, sign this. Hey, let me take a picture. Now there's a lot of people want to take pictures. They don't even know who Calais is. And you're like, you just want to take pictures because you think he's famous. Frank Gore doesn't have that. Frank Gore is just literally chilling at the Bloomingdale's, just looking through the shoe selection, and people think he's stealing. They're like, yo, bro, watch that guy. That's who, that's who Frank Gore is. And so, yeah, he didn't have the stress of external pressures. Yeah. That makes sense. I love that. Um, <laughs> you brought up the Miami running back room. Is that like the best? I want, what, what do we, I wonder, it'd be hard off the top of your head or anyone's head, the best group of a position on a college team. Because like, that's what you, you just said. Willis, Clinton, and Gore has to be top three. 
I can tell you, all right, there's the best, and then there's the middle range, and then there's the stars. I think the worst running backs in college football come from Wisconsin. Every one of them just a bust. I mean, Jonathan Taylor's doing all right to hold it on. But you know what I mean? Like top first round, first two round picks for running backs they have from Monty Ball to James. Like there's a lot of guys that you just don't know. Jonathan Clay, they don't hmm. last in the NFL, but they do yeah. really good in college. They're like high contenders. And so I don't, I'm, I'm all from the Wisconsin running back room, all right? If, if yeah. any team I like drafts a Wisconsin running back, I'm like, eh, are we sure? Yeah. Uh, Alabama running backs. There was a point where they really weren't doing it. And then I think Mark Ingram clicked in that year seven. He started balling. And then next mm-hmm. thing you know, Derrick Henry starts balling. But there was a Trent Richardson. There was a phase yeah. where all those guys were pretty bad. So I think they're the mid-tier of running backs. And the alpha room of running backs is the University of Miami. In fact, sometimes the best players on your team are like the third string running backs in Miami, like Travis Homer and, and DJ Dallas. Like these guys get touchdowns in fantasy. You might not have them, but like obviously. Hmm. Lamar Miller, uh, Clinton Portis, Willis McGahee, Frank Gore, Najee Davenport. Like, you'd be surprised how many people you just you find on fantasy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got Hall of Famers. So, yeah, Miami is the alpha room of running backs. Indeed. What do you think, though, like in terms of just on one team at one point, like let's say LSU, what wide receivers were all together at the same time? Like, what was the scariest, which I think this Portis, Frank, and uh, McGahee running back at the same time? That's the scariest set of running backs ever at once like is lsu probably had jefferson uh they even what's had, name? They, had, they had like i'm gonna google it right now so just watch mm. they had like Najee davenport who was like pretty good that team like the 2002 right? hurricanes running back room might have been the best running back room of all time as yeah. far as like success in the pros i'm sure i wonder what was the best TV. uh quarterback room of all time was uh isn't it alabama with jalen hurts to attack of Aloha and uh there's gotta be better than that matt jones there's gotta be better all well, right running back room oh, they, they split it up i wish they did it by position i don't like this i don't want to have to go through numbers quadrant hill is good he was really good i think he boxes now he used to come back huh. a lot all right willis mcgay he was a running back frank gore jared payton the coach son was on the team at that point those were the starters. This is the bench players. All right, I don't know. This is more difficult than I would like it to be. So that's what I was on. thinking. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. But yeah, I wonder what uh, what team kind of had it all at one across all, across the board: quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers. But yeah, all right. Well, yeah, I'm glad you like my comedian thought. Oh, we got some news NIL because we talked about this last week. NIL's been going. There's been some negative stories. So, what's his name from Nevada? Scuola, Scuola, New Mexico. New yeah, Nevada. it's UNLV, UNLV, UNLV. Thank you. Um, yeah, just he's all of a sudden just opting out, and some people are saying, well, obviously they're saying because uh, the school isn't paying him the money they promised. The other is he's got getting offers from other schools, so he's going to sit down. But regardless of whatever side you're on, it's NIL is just shoving more shit. I mean, I respect, both, I respect both sides of this. This is an interesting case. Mm. Like, let's be honest. I don't think Scola is going to be in the NFL. And if he is, it's going to be like an undrafted. He's not a top first day pick. Mm-hmm. And with that being the case, you got to get your bag now. Like, exactly. it's just not promising. So I understand that. Uh, I think the way they're going about it is very difficult. It's kind of hard to like him because he's saying that the team just didn't pay up, which is very, like, it's a bag, that's a big accusation, right? There's like, you know, mm-hmm. this is liars. And yeah. I think it's not the case. I think they're three and zero. He's high right now. I think there's other teams that probably want to give him some money. I think that he's basically holding at ransom, like pay me a hundred thousand dollars and I'll play for you this year. Yeah, but it's kind of it's kind of. I mean, to a point. What if he if they were if they were zero and three or one and two? Does he do this at all? Does he have the leverage? To, even if it was true that they were supposed to pay him money, does he does he hold out to be like, well, give me my money because I don't think his leverage mm-hmm. would be as high. So yeah. Absolutely. Well, which comes to our point last week where just NIL is the Wild West and it's ridiculous. Like this is fair play to him, right? Get your money because you're not promised do it. But it sucks that he's in a position where this is what we're living with. And now this can happen everywhere. I think uh, Bomani, Bomani Jones has said this. I was watching. He was talking about it. It was actually more organized when people were dropping money off in the bag. Like, meet me here with the cash. It was, <laughs> yeah. it was a more of a, a, it was a better success rate of, of successful transactions. Where now it's kind of yeah. like, they're kind of a shit show. They're, they're basically putting it on a third party because no one wants to blame to basically pay these people. And I know Jalen mm. Rashada was suing Florida 
because they promised them thirteen million dollars and they couldn't come up with the funding. So you end up going to Arizona State, where presumably nothing, and you only got paid mm. one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to pay back Booster at Miami. That's the reason. That's all he got. They, he had committed to go to Miami. Someone gave him one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and they, Florida was like, "We'll give you more money." So he agreed to him. They gave him one hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars so he could pay back Booster from Miami, and then he gave him more money. So like, in a way, where they kind of fucked him over. So like, that's a bad play. I think school is just you know it's leverage at this point. Could you imagine? Yeah. Imagine it. Imagine you had a girl you fucking bagged and she was fine and she started getting finer as you was dealing with her and then she was like, you know what? I'm back on the market. I want to see who else likes me. You'd be like, damn, it's not all right. At what point? Where does loyalty land? Where does yeah. any form of commitment? Why do we live in 2024 when nobody commits to anything? Is there ever yeah. like, I made a decision, it's a bad decision, but I got to stick with it because I made this decision? Or can you just leave and do anything? Can you just... Mm -hmm. At what point do we go, no, sit your ass down and do what the hell you said you were going to do? I don't want to watch this guy fucking train him for the NFL with some prime contender as he gets paid from Oregon to come there to be his backup quarterback. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I hope he does bad. And I hope he gives his money, but I hope he, I hope the team learns a lesson. We can't be stealing people's players. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's crazy because, like, however long ago, LeBron, with the decision, kind of set the precedent, and Durant, just kind of people leaving, and some baseball players did too. It's like, that was unprecedented and bullshit and now we've got this it's taken it to a whole new level like you're saying is just there's no loyalty we thought that was the worst this game this is twice as bad just players can leave whenever they want coaches can leave what does the term loyalty mean in sports in 2024 i don't think there is any loyalty right and then also to a fair point it's like why should a player have any loyalty when the team doesn't give a shit about them like especially running backs i'd be like y'all don't give a fuck about me you're not paying me i'm running through a wall and you're just going to like drop me or not pay me the money that, you know, well, I, don't, I should I don't get. Look, I never thought I would take this stance, but as we're talking about it now, it's there. Ooh. Running backs are making way more money than they've ever made before. But it, I guess people just want the like, they want the mm. top money, right? But it's like, yeah. Terrell Davis made like $50 million in his career. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Christian McCaffrey signed like a 75 four year deal. I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely doing all right. Well, what you feel bad. Yeah. yeah, but it's just to a point where, like, yeah, I mean, I understand the salary cap is fucking its own right, right? There's, you're only allowed to spend this much money. You have to spread mm. it up. And, like, at the end of the day, I hate to say it, you can get a running back from a matching school in the sixth round is going to be just as good as your star running back. There's not that big of a difference of drop off between someone that's getting 3.8 yards of carry and someone getting 4.1. So I'm yeah. not, that, that's not my case. I think loyalty is a thing that, like, that's what humans should be based on. That's, that, that's more than money, bro. When you're like, that's old school. That's like, what's the buddy from Invincible? He's an Eagles fan. Like, he wasn't going to take more money to go to the Carolina Panthers. That's you true. know, that there's a there used to be loyalty. You know, people will retire with a team. They might leave for a little bit. Like, I, I the worst thing I've ever seen, and you can throw pictures up when you edit this. Shaq in the Celtics jersey. Uh, uh, Ed Reed in a, in a Texans jersey. Uh, Jerry Rice in a Broncos jersey. Like, there's these pictures you're like, yuck, this disgusts me. And it's just yeah. like, is, are, is the finances really worth it? Like, is it really worth whatever, like, the league minimum they're paying Shaq to go to the Celtics? I hate it. I don't like it. Where is loyalty coming? Team shit out of that, too. They, you know, Tennessee is giving out fans. They do a tax now, like a gratuity, where they, on your tickets, when you buy a ticket, you're paying the talent fee so they can pay their NIL bills. And so all these hundreds of thousands of people go to this game, they raise a bunch of money so they can pay their players, which is great. Like, do that to keep players around. Larry Fitzgerald is one of my most successful. He never won a championship. But he was like a goat and stayed with mm -hmm. the one team and played with the shittiest of shitty quarterbacks. But like that legacy, so much so that I feel like he should have a little ownership. Like you should give Larry Fitzgerald a percentage of the Cardinals. I wonder, like, if you look at Larry Fitzgerald, who's a wide receiver who's won a, t or a championship, but has like left a lot. It's like, who do you look at more? Like, it's just a fan and be like, oh, that's Larry Fitzgerald, but you're not looking at player X who won a championship. Like, oh my God, that's player X. He won a championship. You know, you're still like, oh, no, Larry Fitzgerald. Like, as a fan, does a Super Bowl for a non-quarterback really matter? You are still think, I still think Larry's a GOAT versus if he won a Tell ring or not. When you think of the name Brandon Crooks, what, what team does he play for? The Cowboys. Okay, you're good there, right? Name well, me. That he was just on, like, 17 teams. And, like, yeah, the fact Saints. that he didn't stick with anybody, you just don't – he's just an NFL free agent. Like, you just mm. – I could throw any jersey up and you'd be like, yo, he played for that team. And he actually won a couple Super Bowls, I feel like. He was on multiple teams and won Super Bowls. But does that matter? Like, when you have yeah. no real fan base, there's no fan base that's like, we fuck with Brandon Cooks. Like, he's just – No, like, I, I agree. Guy.
Well, I know there's people that got their, they got tattoos in Larry Fitzgerald. You got tattoos in Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, I mean, definitely you'd want to be like the king of a city and stay around. It's depending on what the, the cost is, right? I mean, if it, five million, I guess it's just like, would you rather work at home or go to an office? Like working from home is worth like 20K, you know, 30K, 40K, even depending what you care about. But that's the same. Like, they, they, yeah. they work from home, they're just like, hey, at 8 a.m., I need you to be on this meet and at 10 p.m., can you just do this, this? And you're just like, yeah, that's yeah. 20 hour work week, man. What, like, what are you doing? I can't work this long. <laughs> But yeah, so I think it's like Larry, like t- I would take a 20% price cut to stay in the same place, especially if I liked it, at least. I guess some could people you, might hate their owner. But could you imagine like Larry Fitzgerald spending his last year kind of old, just had, like, on the Cowboys? Like that would just take a little bit away from his yeah, legacy, wouldn't it? Exactly. Like, uh, what do you feel about, uh, why can't I think from the Jazz, uh, Malone, sorry, Carl Malone. Oh, dude, he did play for somewhere else, right? Or did he the Lakers. He went to the Lakers, sold out to get a championship. And oh, they got Payton. beat. And they lost. They got beat. No, he won one. I think he lost no, they, one. But he... No, no, he got beat. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Detroit Pistons. They only did okay, one right. game. That's why people are like super teams don't work. Um, did Carl, Gary, Gary Payton then won? Who won and sold out went to the Lakers? Lakers were about trying to three-peat. Or I think they did three-peat. They were trying to go for a four-peat with all these superstars. And then they end up uh, yeah. losing. Huh. Yeah, yeah I uh, can Carl, imagine. Carmelo, unique story. Obviously, I'm pretty sure he hates when people bring it up, but he definitely got a 13 year old pregnant. What? He didn't know that. No. Yeah, like just swept under the rug. He got a 13 year old pregnant in Shreveport, and in Louisiana, I mean, there are no rules. I don't fault the man. And in, in, in Louisiana, ain't nothing to do but talk 13 year olds. So, like, I get it. You know, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Is this like one of those things that we can't talk about, like Marvin Harrison murder? But you yeah, talking about Carmelo? Even, 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 like, if we're being honest, there's a lot of bodies around the NFL. Like, I, hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of deaths that's around. I mean, Aaron Hernandez took the fall, but I feel like there's a lot. There's, there's yeah. a lot. Did you create like Tamid's a brother? Ooh, get somebody. Yeah. He got somebody, man. You know, yeah. the little league arguments get real, bro. That's just cutting <laughs> bloods, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, could you make a whole starting lineup out of like? People who at least stab someone, like minimum assault and above. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Probably yeah. Right. They have all those teams, like all domestic violence teams. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all murder team. All murder teams. Ray Carruth, what did... Ray Carruth was a beef. It was a beef. Yeah. They need to do uh, Ray Lewis. I never really understood that one. Like he was, oh, because he was like around it, but it wasn't him, right? Like he was, someone did it, but he was in a car, he says. At yeah, the time. I mean, that's the... Uncle Ray is my uncle, man. Uncle Ray don't seem like he let other people do the job. He's the type of person he want to make every tackle. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he don't watch plays. <laughs> well, okay. shit. Why you want to go so Our, dark? Why are we so dark in this podcast? Man? I don't know. I man, like it. I know that's supposed to be for the kids, man. It sounds like it's you know Disneyland's cousin of Betty. Yeah. Who murdered who? Who did this? I like it. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, Batman. We're like the, what do you call it? Warner Brothers. We don't want to be Disney. You ever hear the Earl Thomas story? That's a pretty creepy story, too. A crazy no. story. Earl Thomas, uh, his wife of like 15 years, she she pulled a gun on him and his brother making love to one woman. You know? And I didn't I didn't know like I didn't know trains of like family. Is that kind of insexual? Obviously they didn't touch each other, do anything, but I just I've never run a train with my brothers and I don't think I ever would want to. And I just didn't know that that was a thing. And so and then to make it worse, no. you get held up at gunpoint, so now you're naked with your brother. Most women, you don't mm-hmm. even want to know. You're like, I don't even want my girls to ever see any of my brother's meats, but it's it's impossible in that scenario, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he was with his brother with another woman, and the wife walked in. She didn't walk in. <laughs> she stormed in with a gun. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. Cool. I, I mean, I'm surprised nobody got shot. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Do um, white people cheat? Yeah, all the time. Probably more, right? I mean, just by numbers and demographics in America and Canada. I don't well, think even by percentage, I feel like white people want everything. You know, they're like, "That's mine. That's mine. You're mine." Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. In Canada, they don't cheat, though, right? Canadians don't cheat. Hmm. I don't think as much as Americans, but they still cheat. Yeah. It's because it's, it's cold. Yeah, cheating is a warm weather. Come, you know, you got like <laughs> hot outside. You got to get, okay. get a walk. You know, when it's cold, yeah. you be at the house watching movies and shit, eating popcorn. 
<laughs> <You're> cuddling. <laughs> you need each other for warmth, right? You can't go like a couple of days without any like someone cuddling beside you. Last yeah. thing you want to be is like hung over on the shower floor, cold water, trying to get rid of that hangover, crying, anxiety. Yeah. And it's cold outside. Now you off yourself. Yeah. Down here, you you're here. warm. You go to the beach. And this is gonna change the subject, but I just realized this. You're a you're a Vikings fan. Yeah. My question to you, have you ever seen a Latino Vikings fan? I don't think I've ever seen a, no. That's, no, that's I have crazy, not. right? Because yeah. when you think of it, it's like Latinos have a huge fan base. They love their teams. But usually it's like Raiders, Rams, 49ers, Cowboys, just strong Southern states. And not just like, you can almost tell where Mexicans aren't by the, the jerseys that they don't wear, right? You're just like, Minnesota yeah. is definitely not Latino. You never no. seen a Mexican in a Patriots jersey. You just never seen no. them before. <laughs> No, that makes sense. What uh, are there many black people in Minnesota? Is that it's like kind of right? It's kind of like are Arizona. You serious? Prince is from Minnesota, man. Come on, you're trying this. There's a lot of black the talents come from Minnesota. Black people hmm. are everywhere, man. America, yeah. There's a whole thing about like you would notice this Canadian. There was a thing called slavery where they would just send black people and then when slavery was oh. on, black people would, like get away from the south and they just moved north to everywhere Ooh. besides Idaho and Wisconsin and Wyoming. I mean Wisconsin, but like Wyoming, Idaho. Well, I thought Minnesota and, would be the same. It's like similar, nah, right? Man, it's parallel lines, man. Anything that's if you was in Jackson, Mississippi, you went up to Chicago. If you was in Louisiana, Texas, mm-hmm. you went up to Minnesota. Okay. The Revenant. You didn't see there was a black dude in the Revenant. He was in the background chilling. I've never seen the Revenant. Oh yeah, the yeah, Revenant. Got it. Yes, I have seen that. Why did you? Why um, did you think? Why did you think I was thinking about the Revenant was like some kind of like BT classic? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second to understand what you said. Uh, <laughs> But like Phoenix doesn't have like a big like African American population. Why is that? Uh, because it's 157 degrees. <laughs> yeah. It's actually been growing. It's actually it has a decent amount. I mean, hmm. technically, it's underrated. Black people are 13 percent of the population. And Phoenix has like a six percent black population, and yeah, it's yeah, like half of what it normally is. But like L.A., California, like people didn't stop in Arizona. They kept going. Yeah, it's that's too fair. close. Too close to the racist shit. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, being a Vikings fan, what do you feel about the Vikings? I feel like I was saying the other day, it's kind of like I have like an abusive girlfriend. It's like, but everything's been good for a few nah, weeks. So truth. you're like, oh, nah. yeah. Like I told you at the beginning of the year that Sam Darnold had nothing to fucking lose. And his yeah. whole career was riding on this. And he had two of the top receivers in the game. And Sam Darnold is showing you standing on business. Sam mm-hmm. Darnold is going to revamp his career the same way Baker Mayfield. Like there comes a point of hunger. Something makes people weaker. They get drafted in the first round, top five pick, top ten pick. Everybody's like, oh, you're the man. And agents, oh, you don't got to worry about this. We're holding out until we get it. And you get this idea that you're great without earning anything. And then Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield was like, damn, they got cut, traded. You start to feel like, damn, do I got it? And at that point, you went to the gym. You ever seen? You ever went to the gym and you can just tell when somebody's working out with purpose? Like some people just working out to look good and get women and, you know, oh, yeah. Mm. But you ever seen someone busting ass like, I got to. Like that dude's got to fight somebody. This is somebody he's working out with intention to whoop someone's ass. That's how <laughs> Sam Darnold was working out. He's like, I got to show these motherfuckers that I'm dangerous. And he's playing like it. I like it. Their Vikings are going to be good. Yeah. Well, let's jump into that game. I, it's not first on the list, but Vikings Packers. Oh, the I checked the line two hours ago. It was Packers two and a half. Now it's jumped to three. I think they announced that uh, Jordan Love is even closer to being able to play. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Um, Packers have been surprising. Matt LaFleur has been playing, uh, doing great job of coaching. Matt Willis mm-hmm. looked great. Their run game is strong. Josh Jacobs looks like he's the best running back they ever put on a Packers uniform. She has a lot. Everything says they should win. I just still think these Vikings team, I think Brian first defense is strong. He's always been a great defense. And they, to me, they're a hungry, like they don't have any stars. I mean, the biggest star they have is Harrison Smith. Is that a star? So with that, being the, with that being the case, I feel like, that's where teams win. Like when there's not like it's just a bunch of guys that like we're gonna prove the world. You had Sam Darnold. He's a top five pick. At some point, people thought he had the tools, and then mm-hmm. you give him Justin Jefferson. I think Addison might be coming closer to back. When Hawkinson mm-hmm. comes back, he has the tools. And Aaron Jones, this is his revenge game. Like he knows everything about them. He knows their weaknesses. He knows who's cheating on their girlfriend. He knows everything about this team. Aaron Jones is gonna go to work, man. I, I I'm on your Vikings, bro. But I was wrong I'm, last week, so you might take that as you want. Take that as you want. I'm with it. I think I would take whoever was the underdog, like take the points if you're going against the spread. So the fact that they're – like I think if I told you the Vikings were 1.5 favorites, 1.5 favorites, you'd be like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So the fact that it's like 
three point favorites. I just don't see it. So yeah, I'm taking the Vikings. But then At maybe the fix is in. Maybe Vegas is like, we are begging you to take the Vikings. We're begging you. Everybody wants to take the Vikings because you're like, you get points and they could win. I'm going to take the Vikings yeah. on the money line. And then Vegas is like, ha, ha, surprise. 47-point blowout. We're rich now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was thinking also, jumping ahead to a different game, but you called it. Josh Allen must have listened to you on the podcast. But you said on like our first podcast that it's so nice as a quarterback to not have a wide receiver demanding the ball and it makes life a lot easier and sure enough josh allen came out and threw a little dig at stefan Diggs. I, I i didn't call it i thought the bills were gonna be ass this year and they are i'm still standing on business in fact i'm wearing this hat because i'm standing on business i said yesterday last week that the jaguars would win and not only did they not win they got their ass with like bad mm-hmm. and made me realize that Trevor Lawrence is beneficial. That's that's white supremacy in a little bit. Because like <laughs> if he was black, he wouldn't have had this leash. Like if Deshaun Watson was white, he'd still be very high regarded. Like and so yeah, Trevor Lawrence, yeah, that shit's not it, bro. Um, no. But yeah, the Bills look good. Their defense is starting down runs. I think every one of their wins is kind of asterisky me though. They should have lost the Cardinals. They beat two of who's afraid of him and he got hurt. And they mm-hmm. whooped the, they've been whooping teams' ass, but I don't know if they're good. And so I'm fading them for the rest of the year. I'm starting Ooh. starting today. Every time they're dog, I'm taking the every time they're playing against the team in their favorite, I'm taking the dog to win money line. We're gonna see how much I win. I might be broke. Give me how about this? If we're gonna do this all the time, give me a hundred dollar budget. I'm putting ten dollars on the other team money line from now on. We'll see how long my ten dollar lasts. All right. Well, the Ravens are two and a half point favorites. So Oh. Yeah, the Ravens yeah. gonna beat their ass. Oh yeah? yeah. I just feel it's a tough one. It's going to be a great game. It's like one of the best games of the year. Well, they stopped the run really well. That's what they've been doing. Nobody's been ever running them, because, but they haven't mm-hmm. played any great running quarterbacks. It changes everything. You have to literally keep an eye on the quarterback, which gives a, less of a man to stop the mm-hmm. run. And you got Derrick Henry running that bitch at you. Huh? Yeah. How's that feel? Yeah, it's not Travis Etienne. It's Derrick Henry trying to put mm-hmm. his fucking helmet and his hand on your face mask and throw you to the ground like a pastor on Sunday giving you a blessing and let you get the Holy Ghost as he steps over you. Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, Baltimore Ravens, Buffalo Bills ass. I'm thinking the Bills win only because until Josh Allen gives me a reason not to doubt him. And then the Ravens, I don't actually count last week. Like they were kicking the shit out of the Cowboys and then just took their foot off the pedal. Cowboys got lucky, got an onside kick. So really that while it looked close and that they let up, it was really bullshit. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm still going to take the Bills. Is this Josh uh, this Allen's is a, MVP season? Is this Josh Allen's MVP season? Oh, Never yeah. You think he gets Especially if season? Mahomes is just kind of fucking around. Like, I, I said this from the start. I don't think the Chiefs care. I mean, they're just kind of like in LeBron mode. Let's get through the regular season. Let's get to the playoffs. You know, be 11, 12 wins. They don't give a shit. No, they might go undefeated. They find a way to get out of every fucking game. So, yeah, <laughs> go undefeated, true. but they don't care. But yeah. no. Josh Allen has not thrown an interception through three weeks, which I think is the first time in his career this happened. Josh Allen's an interception yeah. machine, and somehow he's just handling the ball with care. And I don't know how long that lasts. I don't think that's going to last forever. But if it does, yeah, and he's I was always, MVP. I was always anti Josh Allen and pro Josh Mahomes for, or sorry, pro Patrick Mahomes for obvious reasons. But Josh Allen now isn't playing hero ball because that, that was his big thing. He's he was always like trying to make something out of nothing, doing stupid ass shit. Like it, if no one scored a touchdown. Like it had to be him. Like no one else can do anything. And he's so now, yeah, like you said, he's kind of playing a bit more smart, which I guess makes sense. He's getting older. How old is Josh Allen? 29? Hey, Google, how old is Josh Allen? 28 years old. He's 28 Ooh. years old, man. That's he's older young. Than your girlfriend. He's older than wow. your girlfriend. No, same age, actually. So I'm Josh Allen. You lied. You said your girlfriend was Joe Burrow's age, man. Well, I thought, I was, I thought Joe Burrow was turning 28 this year. No, nah, you can't just take a younger athlete and try to use that to make it sound better. <laughs> I, take that, I, thought, your... I thought it sounded worse. Joe Burrow is way. I thought it was way younger than Josh Allen. I don't know why I feel like there's a big gap between those two. Right? Players. I would have thought at least three years. That's crazy. Yeah. How old's okay. uh, Mahomes? Hey Google, how old is Mahomes? <laughs> twenty nine, and he just turned twenty nine too. Wow. Yeah. Do you think his wife is causing him stress? I feel like, again, external fame. He's not uh, playing great this year. You think that's just because his wife is just like, we got to go to the Trump rally. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And all the Kelsey stuff, and he's in a million commercials. 
Yeah, it's just yeah. there's no time to really focus on football. Yeah. They're going to three beat though. I think they're going to win it all. They are looking nice. Yeah, it'll be good to see a Josh Allen Mahomes head to head a couple times. They're um, not going to get there. They're going to suck. All right, go ahead. Next game. <laughs> Steelers Colts, my lock of the week. The Steelers are only two point favorites. The Colts are better than you think. I don't think so. Anthony Richardson is a, the is the greatest worst quarterback of all time. I, I don't know how Aaron, you. Spread I think that. Aaron Brooks is, but Richardson could be in the running. <laughs> Anthony Richardson can throw the ball seventy yards in no time like that, and like the Steelers defense is so good that like only an or, unorthodox person like Anthony Richardson could exploit that. Like, just somebody that, like, could shake T.J. Watt and their corners are not used to covering that long, so they're just fucking, fucking streaming Alec Pierce and Michael Pittman catching 60-yard bombs. And I just felt like Justin Fields in that offense has been winning with, like, 15 points. They're just a 16, 20 points max team that wins games. And the Colts, I think, yeah, they can shut down their defense. I think they have what it takes to get that first win. And, I mean, if we're being honest, if the Steelers win this game, they're going undefeated. They're going 17-0 yeah. with, with the worst roster of all time just going undefeated because who can beat them? If the coach can't beat them, who can, you know? I think uh, Justin Fields' breakout game, he goes absolutely bananas. If it's just fantasy points, he leads the league in fantasy points because the Colts' defense is terrible. They lost to force are they? right? Yeah. Are they? They are. They I mean, let, team scored, no team scored a lot of points on them. They're terrible. No, I'm Let me see it up. I don't think anyone scored over like 24 points. The Texans put 29 on them. All right. And the Texans are supposed to be the highest power, but like Green Bay put 16 on them. That was with the, Malik Willis. The Bears put 16 on them. With Caleb Williams. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, shit, you act like Justin Fields is a class above all these guys? <laughs> like, I think he will be. This is like they finally going to let him throw a little bit. He's going to run for a crazy amount of yards. I think I love it. I think they crush uh, the I'll, Colts. Are we on the opposite side of every bet so far? I think so. That's interesting. Also, Anthony Richardson has thrown an interception on 18% of his completions. So he's completed 18% of his passes to the other team. I just want you to know that. 36 <laughs> passes, 6 interceptions. <laughs> I see the play where he was in the goal line literally just threw it to the defensive player. I feel like... Yeah. That was terrible. If there, if there, all right, if there was one player you have to think of, like, just watching that they're... They're making a shit ton of money gambling against. Who's yeah. that player? Who's that player? Jameis, Jameis Winston and Aaron Brooks. No, Jameis was really. I think it's 30, 30 is an impressive stat. That's a. It's hard to throw thirty interceptions. It's also hard to throw thirty touchdowns. He led the league in passing a year too. He took like five thousand yards. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He he, he he had that. Uh, he was betting against himself. You you really don't realize who's betting against himself until you're betting for them. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Why is this guy going down that easy? This is not normal. Right? Yeah, uh, we're not going to name any players in case we get some money on here, but there's a couple exactly. of guys I've been like, oh, <laughs> you guys might have a FanDuel account. Will Levis. <laughs> Ooh, that's one right. A current one is Will Le- Levis. Like, oh, we're winning the game. Oh, I'm falling. Here you go. Yeah. Cover that spread, bitch. Think about how much money you can make. Will Levis is probably making, <laughs> what, $300,000 a year? Like, nothing mm. really. And, it, like, you can make you take the, the other team money line when you're a heavy favorite. Like, hey, at halftime, you just call Uncle Rico and be like, hey, Unc, yeah. drop the bag. And he's just like $7 million on the Titans salute. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, they were up, what, 17 points in the the one game and then just the fucking threw it away. Yeah. <laughs> I could see it. Will Levis is a cheater. We all know it. We're close to point shaving, bro. We're close. Mm. I thought about it, man. I got a daughter. I lost so much money gambling that I was like, I want to train my daughter to be an amazing tennis player. She'd be so good. Mm. And just one time when she's like in a tournament that doesn't matter, I'm just like, hey, baby girl, for daddy and all his closest friends, can you drop the second set? Just go ahead and let it with your <laughs> You can win the game. Just lose the second set and just go yeah. make all my money back, man. That's, that's fair. That's how I gamble. That's when you gamble. That's what your brain thinks. That's how you think. You're like, how am I gonna get my money back? You start formulating plans. All right, I gotta take my daughter to the gym every day. I gotta push her hard. Like you know, a real abusive father, it's like Joe Jackson and you know <laughs> Serena's daddy, and you know those guys that like push you too hard when you hate them, but at the same time they make you great. I was gonna do yeah. that with my daughter just to get my money back. Again. It's funny you say that about the parents who hate because uh, Tiger Woods, his, him and his dad had a big falling out. Like. I feel like that's a big thing with phenoms is you have that dad who pushes you yeah, so much you, that you hate them. You can't have love. 
love love in the recipe throws off success. You need to be like, you don't even care. I'm just an object to you. You're like, get your ass back on that field. Like that's <laughs> where success comes from. Like, I wonder if Tiger Woods could change it all around and just be a mediocre golfer versus the best ever, but have like a good relationship like with his family and less obviously mm-hmm. like it's put him in the trauma of the sex stuff he's been into because his dad was a bit of a scoundrel. I could just, I could just guarantee Tiger Woods' kids aren't going to be that great. It just seems like he's taking too many pictures with them. Like, yeah. just like, I don't know what Tyreek Hill's family's like. I don't know his family life. I just imagine he don't have a great relationship with his dad because he's just that good. He's that good that this has to be some form of like, I'm showing motherfuckers what they missed out on. Is that also why he has like 10 kids? Yeah, that's probably the reason why he has 10 kids. He's like, my dad went around on my do you ever think he slept with that cop's wife? That was my like big aha moment. Like maybe, maybe he was banging that dude's wife. Damn, he was like, "I'm gonna show you," and put his knee in his bag. <laughs> yeah, damn, that's a good right? theory. Yeah, never thought or his about daughter, it, yeah. or his daughter, one of the yeah. two, because that guy's a little bit older. Yeah, I could tell. Like if you listen to the audio when he was doing, he was like, "You and yeah. your big ass dick are going to get arrested." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like giving like fucking nut shots. <laughs> 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 uh and he just knew like that's what his daughter was into and like he looked at what was the tight end and the tight end is like a big dude too he's like oh look at he's gonna go at her too isn't he yeah he's just that Calais, and he's just he's arresting <laughs> big sexual <laughs> monsters he's just thinking about what they would do to this woman or daughter and he's just like everybody's going to jail and then two are driving by he's like you're fine come on <laughs> yeah. see you later Mike McDaniel, good game. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. He did go off to like the most mandingo of the team. <laughs> I wanted to let like a few weeks pass before I brought this up. It wasn't yeah. sensitive. <laughs> and he just, <laughs> and he just, uh, and what's this conversation at home after? Like, he didn't leave his wife. He just knows that she slept with Tyreek Hill and now you're wrestling. Mm-hmm. He's just like, Hmm. See how it did it work today. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he like whispered? He like had the handcuffs that his wife had. And like, look, look who's using these now, bitch. And he fucking put the handcuffs that Tyree hang up his wife up to her bed yeah. against. And just had like little got, subliminal things. <laughs> Tyree was like, I got a knee problem. I got a knee problem. I was like, oh, yeah. What was that knee problem, man, on May 13th, huh? What was that knee yeah. problem? <laughs> I know you fucking hit it on the side of my mantle, you motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> that's why you got a knee problem. I would like that, sir. That would give me a full, like, everybody he's at peace. That would be justice in a weird way. It's like, all right, I get it. Yeah, definitely. Or, like, Tyree, like, <laughs> hit it running away, like, trying to jump the fence in his backyard, and that's why he, like, hit it on something. <laughs> he just knows. Yeah. yeah. You got it. You solved the case, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, Jaguars, Texans. Texans, six and a half point favorites. They're going to start thinking about benching Trevor Lawrence. I've never seen... They're 0 and 4, right? Three, They're 0 and yeah. 3. They're be, they could be about 0 to be 4 0 and 4. Yeah. yeah, the Texans. I'm this way. All right, this is my thought process. I think Texans are good. CJ mm-hmm. Stroud was balling last year. This year he's been all right. Yeah. I don't like how he's, he's like, took him like he's got it already. Like, I've seen him giving advice to Caleb Williams. The fuck, you're a second year player. How are you giving advice? Hey, we're taking him hits. Motherfucker, you or me? We're peers. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I just, I don't know. I'm wearing a Jaguars hat right now. Duval needs it. I think teams are very hungry when they're at this point. Like, if they go 0-4, their season's over. I think people are mm-hmm. playing for their job. <clears throat> What's the spread on it again? Six and a half. And, and, and traditionally speaking, just this year, most people who've been like five and a half or higher have been winning out, right? So, like, yeah, the NFL heavy favorites are just not the wave. So, I, I'm going with the Jags, man. I'm going with the Jaguars. Yeah, I got a stat for you. Six point favorites or higher are two and fifteen against the spread this year, and nine outright losses. So out of seventeen games, nine have been outright losses. Damn, which is crazy. So that means your your average better is like losing his mind. How much money lost with the fucking Chiefs? How those Chiefs blow that? Yeah. And there's some guy that's just really like bad at betting, but just like loves taking dogs. It's like rich and like just. I told you so to the world. Mm. Usually he loses a lot of these bets, but right now he's like, yeah, I put $700 on the Bengals to lose at seven yeah. point dogs, and I just made $40,000. You're like, no <laughs> way, but he did, and he can brag for this month, but eventually he's going to start losing. He can get caught up. I also think if the Jaguars lose, I think Doug Peterson is fired. What's the earliest coach has ever been fired? 
You can't fire them that quick. They, they, you don't they think? Wanna, they won a playoff game just like two years ago, but they did go start. They were winning a lot last year, and they tanked like the last seven games. Mm-hmm. And then this year, they're 0-4, so you're right. Something's got to change up. But if you get rid and of Doug Peterson, you got to have I don't think they can talking. get – yeah, they can't get rid of Lawrence because they just paid they just him a ton of money, right? Million? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, they, they, they can't – trade him. But... The owner and the GM can't blame themselves with their Lawrence money, so they have to blame Is the coach. Is it good? Answer my question. Is Trevor Lawrence good? That throw, that yeah. interception he had, oh my god, that was he brutal. like overthrew. Yeah, the receiver by like forty games. Yeah. yeah, I think he was trying to help Demar Hamlin out. The guy almost died on the field. You got to do some kind of like chair. Yeah, know, that's um, fair. I think that was his and first th- interception too. Was Demar and then also he, uh, there's it was like in the third quarter when the pocket wasn't really closing around. It was just like a touch, but he like went like this like instantly, and no one tackled him. I don't know if you saw that. And then he like ran, yeah. and he's like, so is he just fucking scared? He's gonna get hit every two seconds as well. I mean, once you get paid, I told you, once you get paid, what what's the incentive to, like, ball out? Like, you know, some mm-hmm. people really, like, love the game and, like, they want to work hard. Some people get that bag and they're like, shit, it's time to go holla at pretty-ass Latina chicks and chill, you know? Yeah, except for if you're a Vikings fan, because there's no Latinas yeah, for Vikings right. fans. You can go, I mean, if you're be honest, if you live in Minnesota, you need to get on a plane. You need to find a, a website like the Flight Deal. Hopefully they sponsor it. See when they mm-hmm. got a discount to go into like DR or to Panama or to yeah. Colombia, and you need to get the fuck out of that freezing cold city. You need to go see some Latinas. Latinas make life better. I'll tell you that. I was talking to my really? therapist. He was like, "Yeah, he was. You know, my therapist, my barber, and he was basically like, yeah, man, hoes, hoes is what you need, and hoes really do fix everything. Like, you go through depression, hoes. You're going through a uh, financial struggle, hoes." Like yeah. Literal holes, like work, have to give them work in the strip, you know, give them on Figaro and make you some money. Um, if you're going through uh, marital problems, hoes. Yeah. What your wife won't do, there's a girl out there that will do. So, yeah, Ooh. hoes really is the recipe for progress in life to find success. Even if you have a problem with hoes, more hoes could help. Okay. It's an interesting thought. Where it's legal, of course, I guess. A little preface with that. Well, I was using hoes in a more metaphorical term. Of oh, yeah, living. yeah. If you're talking about sex workers, yeah, that's not the answer to everything. But it is the answer to about three of those things, but not everything. Not everything. That's that's understandable. Hose is, but hose is metaphorical. When you say hose, like where the hose at? That doesn't fully mean. White people think it's literal. Like, oh, shit, you're talking about Vegas or Figaro. No, where the hose at? It's like a greed. It's like, where where would I find a large batch of women that I could find myself in a better, pleasant environment because they're around, you know? So that's what we're or men. Mean. There's men hoes too. We don't want to like disqualify women nah, who need some men hoes. Nah, men. They can be men. You can like that. That's fine. They don't qualify as hoes. Nobody's like the hoes is over here, and it's a bunch of men being. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what about like? <laughs> we gotta start doing that. Like, hey, <laughs> stop it, stop it. Hey, real talk. All right, hey, answer me this question, right? This is this is gonna be funny. All right. Say I'm talking to the girl of my dreams, right? I, I stumbled upon my future wife. We're talking. Uh, we, I've and, been to this, but this okay. place, by the way. So go and, ahead. And with and you, she has a best friend. Hmm. He is her best friend. All right, Ooh. non-binary. Who knows? They maybe they, but it yeah. was probably born with X Y chromosome, right? One of the alphabets. And, <laughs> and you have to try to help me. Now, clearly, you're not gay. At least I think so. You come up closet if you want to on your podcast. Be a good time to do it. How would you? entertain that person long enough for me to win or sell the deal oh i'm good with like i'm a good flirt either way so it's like i can do it and like oh that's a nice watch you know oh yeah what kind of music you like i can take that down for sure but like how take long? it down because you, you entertain for like hey you know like they say it takes i read a book where it was like six to seven hours of time of comfortably communicating is where a woman's guard will come down when she feels comfortable enough to have sex with you so how could you entertain a man for six hours I, was... I don't think you need a wingman for six hours, right? Like, I think you just got to, like, put in that good 30 minutes of banter. Oh, you get us some drinks, get us some drinks. Oh, yeah, it's funny. You know, you move around a little bit, talk about, come back. Oh, what's up, Jeremiah? Yeah, great dick. And then you just keep on doing stuff. But you entertain passively after the first, you know, you need that first 30 minutes of trust. Then you kind of be a passive no. trust. Let's say that it's just, we're like, hey, we're going back to the hotel room. But she's like, I don't want to leave my friend. I'm like, Frederick, come on, let's go back to the hotel room. Yeah. At what point do you hop off the wing there? Hmm. Probably a couple hours, right? Like, I think we can have a good conversation and joke around for at least two or three hours. Like, I'm entertained. <laughs> and then at that point, I think, like, 
the guy knows that you guys are like hitting it off and is ready to just kind of okay so let nah, them be. He kind of likes you, so he's just he's, he's there. Yeah. He's, so maybe that's where like, yeah. I go. Like I was like, hey, I know this uh, speakeasy down the road. If you want to go there, let these two uh, kids have their fun, and we have ours, and then we walk. And so I mean, have a couple of drinks. And you, you, you're catfishing the man. And for you, though. Like, but this is for like, you. Those guys are assholes. I'm, all right, you're not going to let me win this hypothetical. So you won. You won. Mm. You win. I thought you were going to be like, all right, I'll kiss him. <laughs> so I thought you were going to go here. <laughs> no, I don't think you have to kiss him to entertain him, right? I don't know what kind of world that is. <laughs> what if he what? knew that, though? He was like, my friend gets hit all the time. And if you want your friend to win. I don't think I would kiss a guy for you to get some action. My wife, Frazier? Kissing oh. a man for my wife? If we like went to the future, back from the future, like you have to do this for me to like be everlasting happiness, it would. I wouldn't say it wouldn't be a instant no. Wow. Just so you know, you know that. I, was, I was having a conversation with someone I, that you might could say is a little homophobic. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't want that person to be frowned upon mm. or anything. We had this conversation. I said, if you could save the world, you knew that you were saving the world. All you had to do was kiss this man. Would you? Do? <laughs> hmm. And he said no. He said, "Wow, I was like, you let humanity die. That's intense. Yeah, you play that game so, forever, I guess. Like, how far could you go? Just like for ten million dollars, how far would you go? First step, it doesn't even have to be gay. That's, that's, that's what I told you. Like, that's I would want to go to the Diddy party just to hear the offer. I just, mm-hmm. all right, now what? I, I put the baby oil on me. How much you go? What? What, what do I get? <laughs> like, that's what I, and I could. I would turn it down. Probably, I would ninety percent turn it down." But there, I just, I never got the offer. You know, hypothetically, I'm not going to say yes to, hey, would you do it for a million dollars? No, there's not a million dollars. I'm not. But if the Diddy was like, yo, there's money in the bag right here, bro. Lube yourself up. What you doing, Frazier? Well, no, you're talking about you at the Diddy party. Don't put me at the Diddy party. I'm asking you. I've already told me. I, I gave my side. If someone was like, yo, there's, there's $10 million in this bag right now. You can go buy your house, go chill, quit your job. All I want you to do is... uh. Loop yourself up and twerk in front of these cameras. What you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm twerking the fuck out of that. This is some twerking for Diddy. I do that shit for free. <laughs> doing the <a> dirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't need the money. I'd say hold your money, Diddy. I've been a big fan, and uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, can you put on a uh, Senorita for me, please? Thank you. Let's go. Keep it away from my face. I would be honored if, like, uh, let's take, because Diddy is apparently a rapist, so we got to take that away. But, like, if Eddie Murphy was just beating the shit out of his dick and it was because of you, I mean, at some point, that's got to be like a, wow, you know, I made one of the greatest men ever happy, you know? It's hilarious. It's actually really fucking funny. I hope it's not true, but yeah. I'm just going to twerk for Diddy, man. Not without no money. Did you... <laughs> You would wake up hungover and be like, what the fuck was I doing? I was like, I was wilding, bro. I was, I was wilding. <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, <laughs> keep, keep your money. Yeah. T- turn on the music a little louder. Keep it away from my face. It's disgusting. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, well, anyway, Saints Falcons. <laughs> Uh, I'm a little bit on a Falcons hater train right now just because Me I too. want my brother back. And the mm. Saints look great. They just look good. Derek Carr is the same Sam Donald situation. I don't know. Uh, this would be the game the Saints would lose, and everybody's like high on them, and they would lose. But their defense looks legit. Coach looks great. David Carr looks like he's a suitable quarterback that probably is going to mm-hmm. go Pro Bowl. Alvin Kamara is still Alvin Kamara. I'm kind of pissed I didn't draft him in fantasy. I was like, oh, he's oh, got to fall off eventually. That guy's not yeah. falling off. That guy's been great since he was at Tennessee. Why would anybody ever doubt Alvin Kamara? And then they got a yeah. bunch of guys. That, they have a bunch of just fast guys you don't know. Like, who the fuck is this Shahid guy? What's his uh, name? Rishi. He, he sucked, he sucked yeah. last week. Everybody, like, started him, and he didn't do anything. But, like, that guy mm. is good for at least one 60-yard touchdown bomb a game. Yeah. So I'm yeah, I'm Saints. with you. I'm taking Saints as well. I'm going to make that a lock of the week. I got that and the Bears – or, sorry, that and the Steelers. As locks of the week so far. Colts are unpredictable. I, never never bet against the Colts <clears throat> with your batting dollar. I'll just tell you that right now. Never I will bet always the bet against them. They're terrible. Just um, don't do it, bro. They know when they're betting <laughs> on them and they fucking come down. All right. Yeah. Clip this. I, we need more clips anyways that are just small. So let's just start. I won't start mm. the clip here, all right? Never bet your bottom dollar on the Col- against the Colts, all right? They find ways to take your money, all right? And so all you guys who bet the Steelers and you thought that was a lock of the week like Frazier, <laughs> They're going to lose. They'll only air this if they lose after the game. 
They're going to lose. And I'm trying to tell you this. This is on uh, Thursday, the 26th. The Steelers are 3-0. and Coats look terrible. And watch Anthony Richardson ball out like a fucking maniac this week because you're betting against him. That's why. He wants your money. He works for the banks. He works for the banks. All right. He's going to throw two picks and have the worst game of his career. Actually, that's tough to say because he's had a lot of bad games, but I think he completes under 10 passes. Here's the same game probably for you. Ready? Ooh. Anthony Richardson. I don't know what his uh, yards are. I haven't did a bunch of research on this. Over 200 Mm. yards, though. It's going to be plus money, all right? Mm. Anthony Richardson, anytime touchdown score. He's going to run a touchdown. Michael Pittman, over 53 yards receiving. He's going to catch a bunch of balls. Alec Pierce, over 40 yards or four receptions. There you go. And then Jonathan Taylor, anytime touchdown scorer. And Colts money line. Put $7 on that and send me the receipt. And if it loses, I'll send you $7 back. And I'm saying do Anthony Richardson underpassing one interception and they lose the game by an alternate spread of six and a half points. That's my parlay of the week. You promised to post this after the game? Right, also, because he be brought right? up Alec Pierce. Oh, I had it. Maybe I deleted it. Oh, here. No, I lost it. It was the fastest five players of the year so far. I might be able to remember off the top of my head. Like speed-wise? Like, yeah, like in a game, who are the fastest five players? It's kind of hard, but... That should be. I've been thinking, I've seen that. Someone showed me a clip of like Arch Manning was moving at the same pace as Michael Vick. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Either two things. Either they're lying, which I, hope, I think is more likely. Our CRISPR babies are real. Yeah, white people just decided they fucked this shit. We're not losing no more Olympics. And they just started changing GNX and they just fucking cloned. They, they found some fast dude that they got on a charge and they fucking kidnapped him and took his DNA and they're just implanting it into Christian McCaffrey's cousins and shit. Wow. Yeah. It makes a little sense. Bit racist, but I'm sorry. It's a little racist, but yeah. That's I'm okay. You got to white people moving this fast. You deserve it. I mean, it's something we can do better. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nico Collins is first fastest, Saquon Barkley second, Jerome Ford third, Brandon Eccles, cornerback for the Jets, fourth fastest, okay. Alec Pierce, white guy, fifth. There we go. Yeah. So. Well, that's the guy. That's who you're betting against. That's who you're betting oh against. My, my same game probably is going to hit. Alec Pierce twice. He's, he's in the top 11 two times. Good for him. That's favoritism. Somebody's trying to make him in there for diversity yeah. purposes. You're right. Uh, what game do we have next? Bears Rams. This is a tough one because I think the Bears are terrible, but the Rams are so injury depleted. But also the Rams beat the Niners with the same injury depletion. The NFL just taking money. Uh, Bears are gonna blow them out. I think uh, their their O line won't be able to block the Bears D line. Matt Stafford's great. He'll throw the ball as much as he can, but he's gonna take a few hits. And once they start losing, this is a game where I think. The offense has been bad for the Bears. They need a tune-up game. They need a game where they play good, finally. I think uh, Rome and uh, Keenan Allen, I don't know if he's even playing. I've seen people dropping him on fantasy. Like, damn, Keenan Allen, that's a fall. But uh, I think that this team should get things moving this weekend, and the Bears should win hand it. Like, one of those solid 28-7 to seven games. This is wild. We are, like, I think picked against each other for most of the games. Because we're doing it here again. I'm going Rams plus three. I still think the Bears should be favored in any game, let alone against the Rams, who are like a top 10 pick of their health, a top 10 team of their healthy. What's the strength of the Rams team? What's the strength of it? Coaching. And Eberflus, well, the Bears coach, is like the worst coach as well. It's, it's their offense. And mm-hmm. a good defense, especially with an injury-depleted offense, beats a good mm-hmm. offense. So the Bears won't let the Rams score. And then they may even score points themselves, but if not, I think, I, I, honestly, I think this is what I'm actually hoping for. Once the Rams lose two more games, they're going to just trade Matt Stafford to the Dolphins. Hmm. I heard Bryce Young to the Dolphins. No, Bryce Young, I don't think they gave up on him yet. I think they're just benching him. He might come back and start. But if you're the Dolphins, what, a third round pick to save the season? Do you pay, like, what do you pay for Bryce Young? I wonder what his asking price is. Wait, what do the Panthers want? A third round pick, well, a fourth what? round pick? Well, what do you do? I mean, unless two is guaranteed to retire, you owe him a lot of money, salary cap. Bryce Young, if he comes in and plays good, you can't afford to pay both quarterbacks. It's a very difficult situation you put yourself in. <clears throat> no, because Bryce, because he just got his, Tua did. So by the time Bryce is up for his contract, you can Tua is you can move on from. And if he retires at some point, well, you got nothing on the books. Tackle. He's got a five year deal. He wouldn't want to play on his last year deal. He would probably try to renegotiate. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, Bryce Young, and you just read him right. Like he's just a nice backup. 
and he's if he small, plays good, you, if he plays good, precision. you can probably trade him or do something. But I just, exactly you put yourself in a situation. I don't know. I think Russell Wilson <clears> or <throat> Matt Stafford <throat> fixed the Dolphins. I think Bryce Young needs four years behind a bad team. He needs a Sam Donald situation. Yeah, I just can't see the, uh, Stafford leaving because I, I think obviously Cup and Puka will come back. A couple of their linemen come back. They make a late run. They make the playoffs again. Well, um, I think. This is my theory with training with the Dolphins. Like, there's certain teams where your wife and family are like, fuck that. You know, you get traded midseason to the Patriots or the mm-hmm. Vikings or, or even Seattle. You're like, fuck that. But, like, Miami's one of the few cities where wife's like, oh, yeah, we can do Miami. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's get a place in Miami. Yeah, Miami's a perfect loner place. Like, you don't have to live there forever. But, like, yeah, we can spend a year in Miami. Yeah, and obviously you make more money, too, with the taxes. That's why Calais went to the Miami Dolphins. It was his wife. She had the final decision. She thought about living in Chicago, putting on a coat, <clears throat> wrapping the babies up. Yeah. She thought about Miami. She was like, I'm going to go sit by the beach drinking pina coladas. And it was an like, easy choice. And then she was like, you're going to the Dolphins. And I was like, Calais, go to the Bears. No argument. I would have just said he goes anywhere by those two franchises, but that was just me. I need to be consulted next time. He's going to He's got to stay around, right? I mean, if you're still playing, like, if you're performing at a top 70 at your position, level you stay around for another year he's playing at like a top 30 25 and that's just on the field not including like as we know bias but he's like the best captain on earth like in the locker room oh yeah he's great yeah he's uh, amazing um yeah he gets a lot of that for me um yeah he's (laughs) i think in week three as far as interior d lineman rated as pff who like watches every play and like Mm -hmm. things they do he was uh like the seventh or sixth best player of the week yeah like, like you know, he's 162 years old, right? And he looks 107. He just at a point, like at this, at some point, your grandfather and Calais Campbell will have went to high school together. Like that's just where we're at right now. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> crazy know? that he sacked Trevor Lawrence and then has also picked off Peyton Manning. Like that's a weird longevity they, stat. <laughs> all right, so I guess the Seattle Seahawks, Calais balls. He's that's his team. That's everybody got their yeah. team. Since his career, he's every time he goes to Seattle, he gets multi sack games or at least a sack. He sacked a Seattle Seahawks player for three different decades. I think his first sack was in 2008 against Matt Hasselbeck. Hasselbeck, yeah. And then he sacked Geno Smith. It's Russell Wilson. He knows him so much that, like. And Javaris Jackson. And yeah, no, Claire sacked Russell Wilson so much that he could probably oh. tell Sierra parts of Russell's body. He's like, yeah, on his shoulder, he got a little scar. <laughs> 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 Well, yeah, no, another that's... alternate universe. Uh, Calais is responsible for Deshaun Watson and everything that has happened because he absolutely <laughs> murdered Matt Schaub. Remember, he he sacked Matt Schaub like eight times in one game. No, it wasn't and then Matt that's, Schaub. It was uh, some white quarterback. Yeah, and then Deshaun Watson came in the came second in half that and game and balling. took the reins ever since. And now, whatever's happened with Deshaun Watson, that's all Calais' fault because he retired. So, What's so you're saying those those 24 masseuses would have had a better life if Calais didn't go out and ball out for the Jaguars. Like Deshaun Watson wouldn't have had as much money. He wouldn't. Have, he would have been on the bench <laughs> longer. He wouldn't have needed as many massages because he wasn't playing. He would have taken another year. Effect. The butterfly yeah. effect. There's, there's kids that weren't born because Calais has such a good game. That's sad. <laughs> Why'd you bring that up? I know. Who was the quarterback? <laughs> it was someone white like Matt Schaub. No, it was like huh. uh, it was like a one year guy. He started a little bit. Like he he was gonna get walked down eventually. They didn't draft yeah. Deshaun Watson. Did not play him. Exactly. That guy was like, we're going to ease him in. And then he got sacked like five times in the first half. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was the birth of Saxonville. Saxonville was like, that was a that was a wave. Like, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. if you look at their numbers, they really weren't the best numbers, like even that year, let alone like decades. Mm-hmm. But that defense stuck out because they t- carried Blake Bortles to the damn AFC Championship game and almost won. So like, yeah, the Saxonville, that was a time. I wish Saxonville would come back. That was a fun year for everybody. Man. The world was yeah. better when Saxonville was playing good. I agree. I agree. Um, what's the next game we got? Jesus, we have Eagles, Bucks. This is a tough one. Eagles are two point favorites. Bucks can't run the ball, and Baker Mayfield is great, but he can't throw. He's not gonna win by if you just have Baker Mayfield like Peyton Manning sitting there trying to pick people apart, mm-hmm. he's gonna eventually throw an interception. I'm not saying he's bad. He's much better than people think. He's not an elite quarterback, though. I'll say that on record. He, mm-hmm. He's not top five, top ten at all. Yeah, uh, I think the Eagles' defense is for real. Saquon Barkley might get come. He's gonna definitely get a comeback player of the year. And he could just be offensive player of the year. He's amazing. Jalen Hurts. And I don't think AJ Brown plays, which hurts him. But at the same time, they don't need him. I think they blow this team out hand single handedly. Uh, I'm taking alternate spread Eagles minus seven and a half. 
I like it. I'm taking the Eagles too. And then also speaking of Devonta Smith, it's crazy that you can't like the, what is this biggest um, level of different d- differential? You can't touch a quarterback like this on his head. Like you can't even tap him head, but a running back has the ball or like Devonte Smith has the ball and is being held up by four guys and guys are just fucking spearing him in the face. And it's like, Oh no, that's just football, baby. Like, the disparity, mm-hmm. that's the word I'm looking for, is insane. Now, you can't do anything to a quarterback, but like running backs are getting teed off on, and Devontae Smith obviously got teed off on too. Well, and there's also, I mean, this is just bringing up the race card again here, I <laughs> black and you're white. Traditionally yeah. speaking, white quarterbacks get calls that black quarterbacks don't. So, yeah, they're just like, fuck him, he's strong. Same thing with women in pregnancy. They're like, they can take it. But, you know, if, if, if you know, if Sam Donald's like, what are you doing? They're going to throw a flag. But, you know, Lamar Jackson, ah, oh, you get out of here, nigga. Uh, all right Cincinnati Bengals Carolina Panthers (laughs) Uh, Uh, Andy Andy Dalton's revenge game I -hmm. I think uh, I like the Panthers I think the Panthers are hungry the Bengals are they're 0-4 right yes they're like 0-3 but Joe Burrow looks terrible I mean doesn't look terrible but the Bengals look just terrible I guess yeah, I think, uh, well, technically, this is what happens to them. As uh, Gary Owens is a good friend of mine. I know a lot of Bengals fans. They always start shitty. If you look at the mm. games, the last five seasons, they've been terrible in the first, like, six games. And then mm. they find their stride, and they start winning, and they easily make the playoffs or close to it. Uh, I think that that's what's going to happen. I think they might lose this game, and then they're going to go on a tear. I don't think they lose the game. What's the spread? It's a, it's a decent spread. Four and a half. Yeah. Four and a half for maybe the Bengals. They win, maybe they win by three, but they're not going to mm. blow out the Panthers. Yeah, I would have. I would have thought the line would have been two and a half or three and a half, but four and a half just seems like a lot for a Bengals team that's literally just got shit kicked by the Redskins, who up until that point hadn't done anything. So yeah. at least we agree on that one. Broncos Jets. This is a tough one because it's seven point five, and as we talked about, faves over six have only won two out of fifteen games. <laughs> I like the Jets, so they're looking good. Yeah, I think the Broncos, Bo Nick's going to throw a couple interceptions. Sean Payton's a good coach, but I just felt like this is mm-hmm. one of those games where Aaron Rodgers starts to tune up. He starts to really, mm-hmm. you know, start figuring out Garrett Wilson, two touchdowns. Yeah, and, like, I think the Bo Nick's and the Jaden Daniels, I need at least one more game to, like, actually believe. I'm fading him this week. And then if they prove me wrong again, then Jaden Daniels did look. We can jump into that game. The whole time I was, like, because I was on the Jaden Daniels is going to be a bust leader, leader yeah. of the train. Peter and the whole Kaepernick. game, I was like, ah, you know, those are throws that everyone could make. It's not that great. It's like nice, but okay. And then he made that throw to end the game, and that was the greatest throw of the year. I was like, oh, my God. So I could be in trouble with that. He seems calm. I mean, but he did play the Bengals or the trip track. Exactly. So this is a good <clears throat> fade spot for the Jaden Day on the Washington mm-hmm. Commanders. This is where people think are higher on him, and then you just kind of take the under on his passing yards, and he just does yep. really well. That's what I did. That's what my prop bets are for that one. The Cardinals are three and a half point favorites. I wish it was the Cardinals two and a half because it could be a three point game. But I'm taking the Cardinals. Yeah, I think McBride gets like over 50 yards too. He's been kind of slow. This is the game where he kind of mm-hmm. starts to find his wills. Yeah. Um, Patriots 49ers. Pa- Niners are 10 point favorites. Yeah, you got a uh, you got an East Coast team going to the West Coast, which isn't as bad because the time change you get hours back. Mm-hmm. Mayo's a good coach. Uh, 49ers need this one. They're not going to let off the gas because they were up, what, 14-0 against the Rams to find a way to lose. I don't think they mm-hmm. let off the gas. And they're 1-2 and two right now. Like This is a must-win game for the team that's like in their window of championships. So, yeah, 49ers minus 10.5 is a shit ton of points. But Yeah. That's why I think if the Patriots can somehow keep it close, then maybe they eke it out, but they, they can't come back at all. Like, well, once yeah, Patriots once are down, down by... Yeah. A couple percent is not going to throw you in a game. So if you get down 15, 16 points, you got to start mm. throwing. It's not going to work. Yeah, I'm going to take the Patriots just only because of the spread has been odd, you know, for against spread the underdogs, but I have no faith because 10 is a weird number. Worst yeah, game of the most... week, Browns Raiders. Browns Raiders, they're two, two point favorites, the Raiders are. All right, this is what I want you to do, all right? I'm telling you, everybody's watching this show, all right? I want you to go to your, your bank. I want you to go, how much can I withdraw at once? I want you to take all of that money, all right? And I want you to drive to Vegas. Go pay in cash, get cash back, don't put it in an app. I want you to put all your money, everything you have on it, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, hopefully. And if you don't have thousands, take a loan out. Take a high interest loan because it's going to win. And you go to the, 
go to the telling you say, I want the Browns money line. I want the Browns money line. And you're going to win that bet. And then I want you to stop gambling. Mm. I want you to go take that money. I want you to take your kids to Disneyland. And I want you to go enjoy it. Because if you keep betting, you're going to lose. But after you win that one. And if it loses, at the end of the day, we save ourselves some time. We need to stop. Let's hit this bottom so we get better. Let's recover. But, yeah, that's my, that's my encouragement is that the, the Browns will win this game outright. Why? All right, the Browns have been underperforming. They didn't practice in the preseason. They played like shit the first three weeks. They're finally getting it together. They have one of the best defenses in football. Shit you not. They are great. All right, the Cowboys did exploit them. The Cowboys had a couple of things. They're one of the best defenses in football. Deshaun Watson is playing for his life right now. He is, he's going to start running the ball more. He's trying to make sure he keeps his career. The Browns need this win. If we're being honest, the Raiders are supposed to blow. The Raiders, are, they outperformed their game. They beat the Ravens team they shouldn't beat. And then I think they lost every game since then. They, might have, uh, they, they beat another team. But they're no, not well, this, Yeah, there's lost to the Panthers bad. No, they've only had the one win. I guess the Raiders that they shouldn't have won. They were down by like 10 points, too. They yeah. found a way to come back. They're not I agree. Team, all right? They're at mm-hmm. home. But I don't think home for the fans <clears> the Raiders means anything. There's probably more reason for people to leave Cleveland and go to Vegas and have a fan base. So, yeah, that being the case, do what I just told you. Thank me later. Take everything you have. I'm talking about don't leave money for gas. Don't leave money for in case you lose. Bad risk, all right? I'm, I, I, the reason why I'm doing this is because if it loses, you need to stop too, all right? So, mm. let's, let's, let's hurry up. Let's get this shit going, all right? Let's not slow Ooh. play this and waste our life. Either we make our money, we double up, and we have a good life. Or we lose it, we realize we got to get the health anyway. But we're not staying here. That should be a movie. I like that. Just kind of put it all or nothing, and then you, at least you know either way. I mean, it is the movie. The movie The Gambler, which is a terrible ending. Oh, yeah. He, win- he gets out of everything by winning. He just puts it all, and he fucking walks away, and he wins. But in real life, you lose that bet. You didn't like the movie? <laughs> I thought it was entertaining. Uh, Uncut Gems is a better gambling movie. I feel like that gives a mm. better tell of like what it's like. That guy yeah. is like, this fucking dumbass. He has $40,000. He's going to double down? Or like yeah. the Uncut Gems is him being like, that feeling hits. I know that feeling. Like I got the money to take care of all my debts. Yeah, but I also think Kevin Durant is going. Kevin Durant is going ball. Like I know that feeling. That movie was so real and stressful. I was like, God damn, this is yeah. like looking at myself in a mirror. <laughs> I agree. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'm taking the Browns too, but with less intensity as as Jared. A good game. I'm going to bet this right now as part of my parlay. Uh, Chiefs are seven point favorites over the Chargers. And I only say this because the Chiefs haven't blown out anyone. They haven't beat anyone by seven. And I think Herbert is going to play. So, And it's a divisional rival. Which is, mm-hmm. And I just don't think the Chiefs care. I think the Chiefs are trying to start a record. They're 0-3 against the spread. I think they won against the Rams. I mean, the Ravens, mm-hmm. but they shouldn't have. They should have lost. They're going to be the team that w- goes undefeated without ever covering a spread because Vegas is high on them. That's just what mm-hmm. they're at. Like, we want to come behind and kick a field goal to win a game. So them are, they're favorites by anything more than three. Yeah, the other team. Pound. Yeah, so I've got for my parlay of the week. I'm going Chargers to cover the spread. I'm going Cardinals just to win money line, Rams money line, and uh, Steelers money line. Just right, so you know, my par- here's my parlay. All right, <clears throat> Anthony Richardson over 200 yards passing, Browns money line, uh, and then I'm gonna finish it off with uh, Sam Darnold over passing yards. And, uh, Vikings money line. Okay, all right. Um, so we're both taking the Chargers for the Chiefs Chargers game. We talked about Bills Ravens. Ooh, another two for Monday nights. Titans Dolphins. Oh, another awful game of the week. Is Huntley could play if Huntley plays? Do you have any insider info Snoop, on that? Snoop. Uh, Snoop. It, the Dolphins have so many playmakers. When you add a running quarterback to that mix, mm-hmm. it's going to be hard to cover everybody. So if they leave in a spy out, that means they're going to have to do single coverage on Tyree or Waddle. Yeah. And they can throw the ball far. I think that gives it. Their offensive line has been shit, but a mobile quarterback should buy you some more time. Hopefully that comes mm-hmm. the case. And they're in a must-win situation. Like, if they lose this, their season's down the drain. They, they, this is one of the easiest games on the schedule. They're at home. They get an extra day to prepare. I think that, uh, yeah, I like the Dolphins to beat Will Levis and company. Is Snoop starting? Is it, do we know that for sure, or is that a good chance? It, it's been implied that he's going to start, but obviously Mike McDaniel likes. I mean, they have no one else. Kyler Thompson is out. You're not going to start Boyle. Mm. Yeah, I also like there's so many read options that Tua does, but mostly it's just to pass or or the running back takes it. Now you add in that the quarterback can just take off on like 
wide open green pastures. And uh, if Huntley's in, I'm definitely taking that. But the thing is, if he balls out, <clears throat> he may not trade for Russell Wilson or Matt Stafford. Mm-hmm. I kind of want that to happen, so it's really weird. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Seahawks Lions. I might have to add the Lions and money line, but at three and a half, I think it'll be. I think it'll be a three point game. I'm going to take the Seahawks to cover because I think yeah. either team wins by three. I think the Lions will win, but yeah, my headphones keep falling out. Um, I think the Lions' run game is special. David Montgomery is underrated. Jamar Gibbs can catch the ball in the back from the QB on balance. Jared mm-hmm. Goff just has to be serviceable. The Seahawks aren't great. They did beat the Dolphins, but I don't think that was by any nature of like them being great. So mm-hmm. yeah, give me the Lions to handle business there. This has been a long yeah. ass podcast, man. Whoever listened to all of this shit, thank you. You're a good Jew, but you love Frazier. Yeah, and Jerry. Hey, I mean, I think Frazier. we got some good clips. So yeah. Hi, Frazier's mom. My mom's name is Deb, Debbie, right? Yeah. Yeah, hey Debbie. I know she's listening. <laughs> I know Natil's probably listening too. I love no, it. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> All right, Jerry. Well, thanks for uh, hopping on. We'll do it again next week. Oh, well, I, might, I might have to skip a week, actually. But all right, we'll talk to you soon. Oh wait. Well, yeah, I'm getting a knee surgery, so ciao.